Hello, in this short tutorial, hopefully short tutorial, I'm going to show you how you go about using the PCG tools in Unreal Engine 5.2 to create a room generator that allows you to have a spline and move the spine points around to automatically generate the floor tiles of the room and the adjacent walls at the outer edge of the um, and that's pretty much it. I won't go into much detail on how you go about um, setting up more of the complicated stuff like making the walls higher or um, spawning objects in the room. I'll just focus on the walls and the floor tiles. And to get started, you're going to need to actually enable the plugin, which is the generation. generation. Procedural content generation framework. Yeah and just um, check it and restart the engine like you would with any other plugin. And then we're going to need two different things. First thing is going to be a blueprint, uh, which is just a normal actor. And this one is going to contain our spline and the PCG that we create. Well, the BP to tutorial. And yeah, and opening it up. Um, click. we add a spline and we are going to set the spline to a closed loop because we are going to need a closed loop for the for it to work and we are going to drag a couple of points around so we have a starting area when we get into the scene um, and Remove this and place it into our scene. So it looks like this. And another thing we're going to need is a PCG component. This will uh, yeah, just reference our PCG component that we create. And well, to do this, we actually need to create the PCG component, which is found in this menu. And let's click on PCG graph, and call it PCG. Uh, uh, we open it up and um, before we do anything else, we go back in here and select it in here so we don't forget it. So select the PCG and then the graph, select the PCG room and we're good to go. In this uh, blueprint, we're going to get the spline, spline which will get the spline from our uh, room tutorial blueprint. And we are going to sample the spline to get points um, within the spline area. To get them inside the spline area, we're going to set the dimension to on interior. And we are going to set the interior sample spacing to 600 because in this case our flutters are 600 units wide. Then we're going to just spawn a static mesh for the floor. Spawn static mesh and we can do this by adding a mesh entry in here and selecting our some um, floor one this one and we now go back into a level we already have floor tiles in our uh inside of our spline um we can make this a little bigger by around and we can also go into PCG graph and right click debug. This will give us uh, points where uh, the points that the mesh sam uh, the spline sampler generates. In order for this to work, we are uh, to get the walls at the outside of the tiles. We are going to have to move the floor tiles to be at the center of the uh, points and not at the uh, at the one of the edges of the floor tiles. Um, in this case, this is the case. Uh, this happens because the pivot point of the floor mesh is at the corner and not at the center. So we simply do this by, by offsetting it a little bit by using a transform points node. In this transform points we are going to offset the x by minus three hundred and for the minute max and the y as well. 
because our tile is 300, uh, 600 units wide. And if we do this and connect this and connect this, we should have the floor tiles in the center. Now, to the trick, uh, going to the tricky part, we're going to need the walls as well. For the walls, we are doing the same thing or well, something similar. However, we are going to use uh, the same spline and we're going to transform, doing a transform point. And we do this four times because we want uh, one wall at each edge of the floor tile. So one wall here, one wall here, one wall here, one wall here. And later we will remove this wall and this wall and this wall, all the inside walls. And um, we can do this by doing this and then offsetting the points by a little bit. Uh, in this case, um, we can get a debug, enable, uh, can enable debug for everyone. So we can see the points in our level. And we're going to move this one uh, up 300 and in both directions. So it is now located here. We're going to do the same thing in the negative direction. So minus 300 and minus 300. Now we have this one here. And for this one, we're going to do the same thing in 300 and minus 300. So, mm, oh yeah, 300 and in this one, minus 300. It's 300 minus 300. Yep. Now we have this one. Uh, this construct here. If we go in here and disable the debug on the line, we're going to um, see every point where our walls will spawn. Now we don't want the walls to spawn in here, but we can do a very simple trick because this point here uh, comes from this floor tile, but as well. Uh, but it's also also uh, but it's also generated from this floor tile, and the points at the outside of the spline, uh, of the uh, room are only ever created by one tile. So what we can do is we can go into this point here and get the difference 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 between this and this one. Uh, if we disable the debug for everyone, we can. C and uh, build a debug for this one. Then we can see that we only get these points. If we repeat the same thing for everything, so if we duplicate this by four, and now we're going to get this one as the differences and this one as the source. And here we're going to get this one as the source and this one as the difference, and here it is the opposite. And we plug everything into a transform point node. So we only need one debug. Um, everything is transform points node. Oof. We have the debug here and add the debug here. What we now have is yeah, the points around the edge of our floor tiles. Now we can simply add a um, static mesh spawner. Which is going to be our uh, what did I use uh, wall? Oh. Uh, use this one. Yeah. Um, then we don't see anything. Uh, why don't we see anything? Uh, because that's the wrong uh, thing. We are going to need a mesh entry, and in the mesh entry we are going to set the uh, wall or five. Now we have this, which is almost correct, but as you can see, it was all face the same direction and not the correct one. But this isn't really a big problem. We just have to 
this one here, uh, so we can see what ha is happening. Simply have to uh, um, rotate the points that we create around. So in this case, we are going to need to rotate it by degrees, I think, 90 and 90. That's correct. We also need to offset it a little bit later, but let's worry, don't worry about this right now. This one does have to be 180 because it's 270 because it's at the opposite of the one that we rotate 90. So it's this side and this side, uh, the top ones, and the other ones are this side and this side. So don't need to rotate this one, but we need to rotate this one by 180, 180 degrees, uh, 180. Now we are almost there. Yeah, seems right. Um, we simply need to offset everything by 300, I think. 300 and 300 and uh, minus 300 and minus 300. You have to play a little bit around depending on what values you have. And now we have this. Um, the only problem is that those walls need to be other way around. So this one needs to rotate by 90 degrees by 180 degrees. By 180 degrees, and the other one rotate, needs to rotate by zero. Uh, this one needs to rotate by zero. And now, yeah, now we are done. We can uh, select spline points and move them around. And yeah, that's all the magic that's necessary for this to happen. Yeah, I hope to help you, and 